now we are going to learn uh, about the prostate uh, this is the uh, the male genital uh, the genital urinary system of the male uh, this is the external genitalia this is a schematic diagram this is the external genitalia of the male you know that this is the penis and this is the scrotum which contains the testis and the epididymis okay testis and epididymis was already covered uh, in our topics so this is the external genitalia that is seen but uh, uh, some part is also uh, located internally so today we are going to learn about the prostate which is located internally you cannot see the prostate from outside okay uh, so uh, we'll just review what we learned in the urinary system about the uh, the urethra okay this is the penis uh, the penis contains the penile urethra this is the penile urethra the penile urethra will uh, you know that urethra contains three parts one is the prostate the male urethra contains three parts one is the prostatic urethra then is the membranous urethra and then is the penile urethra or the spongy urethra okay these are the three parts of prostate that you have learned already the prostatic the membranous and the uh, penile or the spongy urethra the prostatic urethra runs through the prostate the membranous urethra runs through the urogenital diaphragm okay this is called urogenital diaphragm or the deep perineal pouch okay uh, that part is called membranous urethra then you have the penile urethra which runs through the penis this is the root of the penis and this is the uh, suspending part of the penis okay now uh, this is the testis and this is the epididymis from the uh, epididymis contains a head body and the tail from the tail you have the vas deferens the vas deferens runs upwards and enters into the pelvis okay this is the pelvis it runs through the inguinal canal and enters into the pelvis okay you know that the testis is the source of production of the sperms uh, that is carried by the epididymis through the vas and this will enter into this will join the prostatic urethra this is the importance this is the point that you need to understand so the urethra is not only part of the urinary system in the male in the female urethra is part of the urinary system alone but in the male the urethra has two functions it is part of the excretory system or the urinary system it is also part of the genital system okay because the vas deferens which carries the uh, the sperms will join the prostatic urethra and from that point onwards the urethra will be common to the genital system and the urinary system so urethra the this part of the from the prostatic urethra downwards uh, the urethra is a common pathway for both the excretory the urinary system and the genital system okay so uh, this structure that you see behind the prostate this is the prostate this is the urinary bladder behind the prostate this structure is called seminal vesicle which is also important in producing uh, much of the quantity of the semen okay so from this point onwards downwards Uh, the pathway is common for genital and the urinary system in the male so next we'll uh, go to more details of the prostate so this structure is the prostate where is the prostate located this is the male pelvis sagittal section sagittal means uh, cut like this okay a male pelvis sagittal section you can see the penis here you can see the scrotum with the testis inside uh, then you can see the urinary bladder here from the urinary bladder you can see the urethra running downwards and you know that this is the prostatic urethra this is the membranous urethra and this is the penile urethra which runs through the uh, this is the uh, root of the penis okay this is the free part of the penis okay that is called the penile urethra or the spongy urethra so uh, the the vas deferens that runs from that is not shown in this picture the vas deferens that runs up from the epididymis will run uh, through the inguinal canal and enter into the pelvis this is the pelvis so this is the urinary bladder the urinary bladder below you have the neck of the bladder below the neck of the bladder you have the prostate so prostate we are topic is prostate prostate is located below the neck of the bladder okay it is located above the deep perineal pouch this is the deep perineal pouch or so called the urogenital diaphragm above the urogenital diaphragm and below the urinary bladder you have the prostate so the prostate is located if you are asked where is the prostate located prostate is located at the neck of the urinary bladder okay suppose this is the in my body orientation this is the urinary bladder Uh, the lower part is called the neck of the bladder okay this is the bladder the lower part is the neck of the bladder 
below the neck of the bladder you have the prostate okay the prostate is located below uh, if this is a urinary bladder the prostate is located below the uh, neck of the urinary bladder below that you have the urogenital diaphragm so here you have urogenital diaphragm so the uh, prostate is located below the neck of the bladder and uh, above the urogenital diaphragm okay above the urogenital diaphragm in front you have the symphysis pubis symphysis pubis bone will be in front and behind you will be having rectum very very important this is the rectum this is called the anal canal okay a above the anal canal you have the rectum so you it is very important to note that the prostate is located in front of the rectum so any uh, clinical examination of the prostate prostate any disease of the prostate you have to evaluate you will have to access it through the rectum so you imagine a gloved finger that is entering through the anus into the uh, a, a, a clinical examiner a surgeon will be examining the prostate using a gloved finger inserted through the uh, anal canal into the rectum and through that it will you can palpate the posterior part of the rectum so a posterior part of the prostate so prostate can be clinically examined by a per rectal examination okay per rectal examination okay so uh, so that is the prostate so posteriorly you have the rectum anteriorly you have the symphysis pubis superiorly you have the neck of the bladder inferiorly you have the urogenital diaphragm also called the deep perineal pouch okay so we have mentioned all relations superior inferior anterior and posterior now on both sides it is clasped by the levator ani it is also called pelvic diaphragm you can see uh, this is a detailed picture you can see the prostatic urethra you can see the neck of the bladder this is the urogenital diaphragm in front you have the symphysis pubis posteriorly you have the rectum and on both sides you have the levator ani these are the levator ani in both sides you can again see the neck of the bladder the urogenital diaphragm this is the prostatic urethra which is running through the prostate so on both sides on both sides you have the levator ani so if i uh, review that once more this is the prostate which is located below the neck of the bladder above the urogenital diaphragm in front you have the symphysis pubis behind you have the rectum you can actually examine the prostate by uh, a surgeon will examine the prostate through a per rectal examination and both sides inferiorly inferolaterally you have the levator ani which are these muscles okay i hope all relations are uh, clear uh, now <clears throat> behind okay behind the prostate uh, this is the prostate this is the urinary bladder if you look this is the posterior view a uh, vast difference this is the vast difference the vast difference will be coming and joining the prostate i told you the vast difference which is running through the inguinal canal uh, will go towards the pelvis and it will join it will enter into uh, it will join the prostate it will pierce the prostate uh, this is that point okay this is the vast difference that is joining that is piercing the prostate here you can see another organ okay this structure is the seminal vesicle okay now what is the job of the vas deferens vas deferens is carrying sperms from the testis okay testis will produce sperms that will be carried by the uh, epididymis through the vas and the vas will be transmitting that towards the prostatic urethra what is the job of the seminal vesicle seminal vesicle will be producing 80% of the volume of the semen okay 80% of the volume of the semen including the uh, many important nutrient contents of the semen example fructose these are all produced by the seminal vesicle okay so this is the seminal vesicle the seminal vesicle has a duct seminal vesicle is located posterior lateral to the prostate and the urinary bladder okay urinary bladder prostate and posterior and laterally you have the seminal vesicle seminal vesicle has a duct this is the duct of the seminal vesicle that will be joining with the vas deferens okay vas deferens doesn't open directly into the prostate it joins with the vas deferens uh, and forming a structure called ejaculatory duct okay so seminal vesicle has a duct that joins with the vas deferens forming an ejaculatory duct the ejaculatory duct pierces the prostate and opens into the prostatic urethra okay i hope the entire genital tract is clear now the you have the testis the testis has epididymis behind it the testis will produce sperms the testis will uh, that will be carried by the epididymis that will be transmitted through the long vas deferens the vas deferens enters into the pelvis this is the that vas deferens that you are seeing that vas deferens will join 
uh, the ejac the join the seminal vesicle duct forming the ejaculatory duct okay the ejaculatory duct will pierce the prostate and drain into the prostate urethra okay uh, this is the uh, structure a section of the prostate okay this is anterior this is posterior these are the two lateral aspect you can say a big opening inside it that is the prostatic urethra okay uh, you can see a lot of glands opening into the prostatic urethra okay and uh, what is the structure of the prostate if you are asked what is the structure of the prostate you have to write three words it is a fibro musculo glandular organ fibro musculo glandular organ why i mentioned that this uh, this is the prostate it contains a lot of glands these are prostatic glands the prostatic glands opens into the prostatic urethra okay so that is that is why it's called a, uh, a glandular organ why it is called muscular between this you have muscle tissue okay between these glands you have muscle tissues which is important for contraction of this gland and uh, secretion of that glandular contents into the prostatic urethra so it is a uh, musculo glandular organ and especially the anterior part of the prostate you have a lot of connective tissue also called fibrous tissue so it is called a fibro musculo glandular organ okay so, so that is a word that i i want you to remember uh, so this is the prostatic urethra this is posterior aspect you can see the two ejaculatory ducts these are two ejaculatory ducts i told you the ejaculatory duct will pierce the posterior aspect of the prostate and drain into the prostatic urethra so these are the two ejaculatory duct they are going to drain into the prostatic urethra okay now uh, what are the coverings structure i mentioned about the structure i mentioned about the relations next i am going to the coverings what are the coverings it has two coverings one is called a true capsule and a false capsule the true capsule is the connective tissue of the prostate prostate connective tissue forms the true capsule outside the true capsule you have the pelvic uh, uh, the pelvic fascia the endopelvic fascia that fascia forms the false capsule between the true capsule and the false capsule you have a venous plexus okay so you have a venous plexus between the true capsule and outside the false capsule you have a venous plexus so any surgeries that you do on the prostate you will uh, do it from the inside of the true capsule okay an intracapsular resection is done for a prostatic surgery example uh, in a bph benign prostatic hypertrophy uh, in that for a surgery you will you will only remove the prostatic tissue but you will we will do it only uh, inside the true capsule inside the true you will not go outside the true capsule because you have venous plexus here which if it is injured it can cause extensive bleeding so it, it, you re remove it only intracapsular okay so this relation this coverings are important and now this is uh, again if you if you have uh, review this once more this is the prostate the prostate uh i i forgot to mention one point prostate has uh it is more broad than the vertical height the vertical height is approximately 3 cm the breadth is approximately 4 cm and the antero posterior the front back distance is approximately 2 cm so the breadth is the biggest dimension okay 4 3 and 2 okay okay 2 cm 3 cm and 4 cm Okay, so this is four centimeters. This will be three centimeters, and anterior posteriorly it will be two centimeters. If we cut through the uh, prostate, okay, uh, longitudinal cut through the prostate, uh, uh, you can see the prostatic urethra here, and here you can see a structure on the posterior wall of the prostatic urethra that is called the seminal colliculus, also called verum montanum, V E R U M O N T A N U M, verum montanum. okay uh, verum montanum also called uh, the uh, seminal colliculus in the seminal colliculus you can see two openings these two openings are the openings of the ejaculatory duct we mentioned ejaculatory duct is coming and opening into the uh, the prostatic urethra okay in the middle you have also one more opening this opening is called the opening of the prostatic utricle okay utricle of the prostate okay utricle it is a blind pouch it is not so important for you it is called prostatic utricle 
Now this structure is called seminal collicle. So you can see also many openings over here. These are all the openings of the prostatic glands. I told you the prostatic glands will come and open into the prostatic urethra. So in the prostatic urethra, you can see all this prostatic glands opening. Okay, so these two are the ejaculatory duct. This is the prostatic utricle, and you can see the uh, many prostatic glands also opening within the prostate. Okay, so this is the interior view of the prostatic urethra. I forgot to mention the prostatic lobes, lobes of the prostate. In uh, the prostate contains three lobes. Some textbooks say prostate contains five lobes, but now it is accepted prostate clinically contains three lobes. You have two lateral lobes, okay, and one median lobe. This is called the median lobe. The median lobe uh, will project into the prostate from when you look into the bladder, it will project into the prostate, and this is also called the uvula vesicae. Okay, uvula vesica because this is the vesica means bladder in the bladder you know that there is a trigon of the bladder and in the lower part this is the uh, internal urethral meatus opening here you can see a bulge of the uh, prostate median lobe that is called the uvula vesica just like uh, you have a uvula in the pharynx okay just like that this is called uvula vesica okay also called it is a projection found by median lobe so prostate contains the dimensions of the prostate I mentioned, the relations I mentioned, the structure coverings I mentioned, and then I mentioned the lobes. You have two lateral lobes, the, uh, the right and left lateral lobes, and the median lobe which forms the uvula vesicae. Okay. Now, uh, here you have the deep perineal pouch. I told you the prostate, uh, the prostate contains, a, I didn't say that, prostate contains a base, Okay, in the superior part, it contains an apex. Okay, it is almost like this conical, like this. It has an apex below, it has a base above, and it has a posterior and anterior surface and two lateral surfaces. Okay, the apex is related to the deep perineal pouch. In the deep perineal pouch, you have the external urethral sphincter. Very, very important. So the sphincter urethra is located here. The sphincter urethra. The sphincter urethra, uh, when the sphincter urethra contracts, it will not allow urine to pass. When the sphincter urethra relaxes, the urine will pass. Okay, that is called the sphincter urethra or the external urethral sphincter. That is located below the prostate. Okay, below the prostate. Here in the neck of the bladder, you have the internal urethral sphincter. Internal urethral sphincter. Okay, the internal urethral sphincter is located above the uh, prostate. The external urethral sphincter is located below the prostate at the level of the urogenital diaphragm. Okay. Uh, next, we are going to the uh, blood supply. The blood supply is by the inferior vesical arteries. Okay, because you know that the prostate is located below the in the lower part of the neck of the bladder. So the inferior vesical arteries. Vesical means something related to the bladder. So inferior vesical arteries will supply the prostate. You can see uh, the uvula vesica produced by the median lobe. Okay, these two are the lateral lobes. Okay, this is a slightly enlarged, probably a benign uh, prostatic hypertrophy. Okay. Uh, venous drainage is by the uh, the uh, perivesical plexus, okay, or the inferior vesical plexus. The lymphatic drainage is through the internal iliac nodes, okay, internal iliac nodes. That is the lymphatic drainage. Now, two important points I need you to remember in the clinical anatomy of prostate is benign prostatic hyperplasia or benign prostatic hypertrophy. But after 50, 60 years, you may have an enlargement of the prostate and uh, that, that is very common and that is called benign prostatic hypertrophy. This is not cancer. Okay? That's why it's called benign. Okay, But the main problem of uh, this enlargement is th this is occurring in the prostatic urethra. So it will have an obstruction of the urinary outflow. Okay, So it will cause bladder outlet obstruction. Okay, That is the problem of uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH. It's a very common disease. Another important disease is prostate cancer. It is much more rare, but it is very important. And you need to uh, differentiate prostate cancer from pro benign prostatic habit. This is very common. Here, the main problem is the uh, obstruction of the urinary outflow. But here, the problem is it is a cancer. It is a malignancy. Okay, These two are very important diseases that you need to remember. Okay, Thank you.